All right, YouTube, today we're talking about one of my absolute favorite problems in all of linear momentum. And in this problem, we're gonna solve for the maximum compression of this spring as the two cards collide. Now this problem is really popular in just about every physics text uh, because the math of what's going on in here is really, really simple. But when you get down to it, the concepts at work in this collision really get at the, the essence or the guts of linear momentum. Now, because this is an elastic collision, when most people try to solve this problem, the first thing they try to do is turn to the elastic collision equations. Now, the elastic collision equations tell us the final velocity of each of these cards. And if you wanna see more about the elastic collision equations, there's a link to another video up here in the corner. But realize, these elastic collision equations, they're only telling us the final velocity. They're not telling us what's happening while these two carts are colliding and while the spring is compressed. So to get a better understanding of what's happening here, what we need to do is turn to a graph of the velocity of these two carts. See, the problem tells us what's happening before the collision and the elastic collision equations tell us what's going on after the collision. But during the collision, we don't really have any idea of what's going on. So we need to take a closer look at what's happening while these two carts are colliding and while that spring is being smushed or compressed between them. Now as the red cart moves forward, this spring is eventually going to make contact with the blue cart. So what's gonna happen is the red cart is going to gradually start to slow down as the spring is compressed and produces a spring force on the red cart. And as that spring compresses and produces a force, it's going to push the blue cart forward. So what we'll see on our graph is the velocity of the red cart is going to steadily decrease and the velocity of the blue cart is going to steadily increase. And it's gonna look something like this. We see this blue cart speeding up as the red cart slows down. All right, now there's a lot of good information hiding out on this graph, and I wanna bring up a few of the things on this graph that this should be noted. Uh, the first is that if you look at this graph, the velocity versus time is a curve. It's not a nice, neat diagonal line. And the reason behind that is because as this cart slams into the other cart, the spring's gonna compress. And the farther the spring compresses, the more force it's gonna produce. Now getting back to the maximum spring compression, the key to this entire problem is recognizing conceptually that as these two carts collide, there's gonna be a period of time over which the red cart is moving faster than the blue cart. And ultimately what that means is the spring is going to be compressing. And then after a certain amount of time, the blue cart will have sped up and the red cart will have slowed down to a point where the blue cart's gonna be moving forward faster than the red cart. At that point, the spring is relaxing or getting longer. And so it's this point right here where the two velocities are the same that represents the position, or really the point in time, when the spring is at its maximum compression. And it's this idea, the maximum spring compression occurs when the two velocities are the same, that is the, the key to the entire problem. Now the next key in this problem is taking the elastic collision that occurs between these two carts and breaking it up ultimately into two halves. We can say in the first half of the problem, the two carts start at different velocities and finish at the same velocity. Realize that's nothing other than an inelastic collision. And in the second half of our elastic collision, the two carts start at the same velocity and then blast apart, finishing at different velocities. Well, that's nothing other than an explosion. Now, the maximum compression occurs after this inelastic collision. I really don't care what happens in this explosion or what happens at the end of this entire problem. All that I care about is what happened between when the carts first hit and when they're going at the same velocity. So in this problem, even though we have what seems like a complicated elastic collision, we're really only concerned with the inelastic collision that occurs in the first half of this collision. So we're gonna use the conservation of momentum in an inelastic collision to solve for the velocities of these two carts when they're traveling the same speed. So we're gonna set the linear momentum of the carts before the collision equal to the linear momentum of the two carts when the spring is at maximum compression, or you could say when they're both traveling at the same speed. 
Now, before this collision occurs, only this 1.5 kilogram cart was moving. So this red cart had some linear momentum, but the blue cart did not. Once the spring reaches maximum compression, we're gonna have both carts moving. And the easy part of this is that both carts are gonna be moving at the same velocity. I'm gonna call that the velocity at maximum compression. Now this velocity at maximum compression, this is the velocity which both carts are traveling after this inelastic collision. Now you'll remember, anytime an inelastic collision occurs, kinetic energy is lost. And we find 1.2 joules of kinetic energy are lost as this inelastic collision occurs and the spring compresses. Now the key in this entire problem is understanding where this kinetic energy went. See, as the spring collapses or is compressed, it's storing energy. And then as this explosion occurs or the spring relaxes, it's releasing that energy back into the two carts. Now if we know the energy stored in the spring as well as the spring constant, we can find the total distance which this spring is gonna compress. And we find at maximum compression, the spring has compressed roughly five centimeters. So thanks for taking a look at this with me. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.